Close the camps! Open the cages! Close the camps! Open the cages! Close the camps! Open the cages! I have a few folks who would like to read statements made by the children in detention camps in Clint, Texas. These are transcripts from interviews with children conducted by lawyers with the Center for Human Rights and Constitutional Law. So, I'm going to start with Rachel. I was apprehended with my father. The immigration agent separated me from my father right away. I was very frightened and scared. I cried. I've not seen my father again. I've had a cold and a cough for several days. I've not seen a doctor and I've not been given any medicine. Five years old. I was given a blanket and a mattress, but then at 3 a.m. the guards took the blanket and the mattress. My baby was left sleeping on the floor. In fact, almost every night, the guards wake us at 3 a.m. and take away our sleeping mattresses and blankets. They leave babies, even little babies, of two or three months sleeping on the cold floor. For me, because I am so pregnant, sleeping on the floor is very painful for my back and my hips. I think the guards act this way to punish us. The testimony of a 12-year-old male. I am hungry here at Clint all the time. I'm so hungry that I have woken up in the middle of the night with hunger. Sometimes I wake up from hunger at 4 a.m., sometimes at other hours. I'm too scared to ask the officials here for any more food, even though there is not enough food here for me. The testimony of the 16-year-old female. We are in a metal cage with 20 other teenagers, with babies and young children. We have one mat we need to share with each other. It is very cold. We each got a Mylar blanket, but it is not enough to warm up. There are benches, but we cannot sleep there. Sometimes it is so crowded, we cannot find any place to sleep. So they allow a few of us to sleep outside the fenced area. The lights are on all of the time. Close the camps. Close the camps. Close the camps. New Haven has. New Haven has a lot of resources. A lot of resources for immigrants and refugees. For immigrants and refugees. Does anybody have an example? Yes. Iris. 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 We will now present a letter to Representative DeLauro. We will now present a letter to Representative DeLauro. With our demands and asking her to commit to visit a camp this week to bear witness. I have Jennifer just here. She's going to try and read as much of the letter as we can get to. She doesn't have a lot of voice as I do. So please, listen and megaphone when she needs it. I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty loud. Dear Rosa. Dear Rosa. Dear Rosa. Who we thank for your support in the past. Who we thank for your support in the past. It is unacceptable that there are thousands of children and families suffering right now in immigrant detention. Oh. It is unacceptable that there are thousands of children and families suffering right now in immigrant detention. Children are denied soap and toothbrushes. Children are denied 
soap and toothbrushes. Crowded into unsafe conditions. Crowded into unsafe conditions. And are going hungry because they are not provided enough food to eat. And are going hungry because they are not provided enough food to eat. Separated from their families. Separated from their families. They are subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment. They are subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment. It is leading to lasting trauma. It is leading to lasting trauma. And some are dying in custody. And some are dying in custody. Or dying with parents as they cross the Rio Grande. Or dying with parents as they cross the Rio Grande. These conditions are the product of the Trump administration. These conditions are the product of the Trump administration. And it's cruel agenda to terrorize to terrorize immigrant communities. <laughs> to terrorize immigrant communities. Criminalize criminalize migration. Criminalize migration. And dismantle our asylum laws. And, and dismantle our asylum laws. Today, close the camp protests are happening across the country. Today, close the camp protests are happening across the country. To declare that members of Congress, to declare that members of Congress must use all of their power, must use all of their power to stop the atrocities now. To stop the atrocities now. Here are three clear ways we request you to act. There are three clear ways we request you to act. Close the camps. Close the camps. Close the camps. Not one dollar for family detention and deportation. Not one dollar for family detention and deportation. Bear witness and reunite the families. Bear witness and reunite the families. It is on all of us to act. It is on all of us to act. Thank you. Thank you. everyone, Lou Mangini from Rosa Delora's office. Unfortunately, Rosa's traveling back down to DC, sorry, and uh, could not be here this afternoon. Uh, and unfortunately, she, she can't give these remarks herself. Uh, I watched her last week, uh, two make weeks ago, in the, oh, make, make a path. I watched her a couple of weeks ago, uh, admonish the people on the other side of the aisle, um, where their voices were during this whole crisis, where they have been for the past year and a half. Uh, we voted against the emergency supplemental yes. bill. Yes. And yes. 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 Uh, Rosa has been to the border. We have done an oversight hearing on this program, and we will be doing more in the future. Yes! yes. And our statement. Uh, given the Trump administration's history of abuses and its mistreatment of migrant children and families, we cannot provide funding without necessary and adequate protections for these children. That is why I voted against the Trump administration's border funding request last week. Yeah. Yeah. I do not trust this administration to properly care for children and families. I fought hard for several critical protections that were included in the House passed bill, but not the Senate, such as ensuring every facility children stay in meet required standards, thank you, required standards of care enshrined in the floor settlement for the first time ever, setting a 90 day limit on how long children can stay in an influx facility, requiring health and human services to tell Congress if a child dies in their custody and requiring Health and Human Services to allow members of Congress to conduct oversight visits without advance notice. Yes! yes. Oh, oversight! 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 oversight. The mission of Health and Human Services is to care for kids 
and place them with sponsors safely and quickly, not to act as the President's Immigration Enforcement Agency. The kids in our care deserve so much better, and I'm not going to give up this fight. As Chair of the Appropriations Subcommittee responsible for funding Health and Human Services, I will continue to conduct oversight to hold this administration accountable. Close the camps! Close the